Is the brand new Lion a great tank or just another mediocre collector that isn't worth its money? That's what we're going to find out in this video. And there is also a second vehicle that is new, and that is the A46 Different, which is not really that much different. It's a tier 7 light tank, and it plays like all other tier 7 light tanks, and if you have to pay for it, don't. But now, we're going to have a look at the big boy, the Lion. Now, how do we equip it? First of all, obviously, always get your cheese ammo, diagonal line, and this is the equipment I would personally use on the vehicle if you ever obtain it. But if you do obtain it, or if you don't, what are the stats and the armor of this vehicle, and how does it play? Let's find out, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Now to get the Lion and the A46, we have to play the Secret Snow event and get some 5 Now Globes right here. After you've gotten 10 5 Now Globes, you will get the Lion, which means it's absolutely not worth obtaining whatsoever. Now, the A46 is different here. I definitely would recommend going for the Snow Globe instead of the A46, because the A46 isn't really that special. And obviously, you can get one Snow Globe right here, and then the rest of them you have to purchase either with your free XP or with gold. So, as usual, the same snow globe event as always, and the snow globes themselves, they do have drop chances that are confusing. Now, obviously, the lower you go, the higher the drop chances goes, the worse the tank, the higher the drop chance, and the lion itself has a much lower drop chance than the other tier 10s in the globe, obviously, because they want you to buy 10 of them to get the lion on charms, and let me tell you that already, no tank is worth 10 snow globes. Not a single one, but is the Lion. The Lion's gun stats are almost identical to the Brigetto 65. I mean, 2 penetration, 10 alpha damage, and 90 shell velocity isn't really that much of a difference. Just like aim time and dispersion is different by not much. You're not going to notice the difference in battle at any point. 8 degrees of gun depression right here is the same as the Brigetto, the Caro, and also the Superior E50M right here. So, basically, you have a Brigetto gun with slightly tweaked statistics and... 200 less DPM uh, for a third shell that is unusable. So, less DPM, third shell is unusable, and 0.3 seconds worse intraclip, and a tiny little bit worse aim time that you're really never going to notice the difference of. 5% difference. That's like, you're not really going to notice most of the time. You're going to notice the difference in DPM and the unusability of the third shell. The Karo 45T also has that problem, but that is where the fourth shell is unusable. And obviously the alpha damage of 380 compensates that for a little bit. And also the DPM is quite a bit higher at 3000 compared to 2700, which is basically almost an entire shot. And the weapon handling obviously over the Karo is just slightly worse, but basically it, it's all the same right here. And it's slightly worse than the E50M. Now the mobility on this vehicle, it's not really that great. I mean, the Karo is quite slow for what it is, but it is slower than the Progetto right here. The Lion and is also much slower than the heavier E50M, which is always lovely to have. Even though it's not great in mobility, it is still fine enough. It's faster than the Karo, so it'll do. The armor on this vehicle, obviously once again inferior to the E50M, but it is much better than the Progetto's and the Karo's armor, and that is where this vehicle can make up the downsides it has in terms of the gun and mobility department. On the turret, it is not that great outside of the gun mantlet. If you do fire at the gun mantlet, you can pen it straight in the middle right here. But on the side of the gun mantlet, 200 millimeters, it's not a very thick plate. It is a nice millimeters plate, but you can just pen it straight away. Lower plate, weak spot like on any tank. Upper plate can also be penned by a lot of standard rounds if you fire at it down. It's not a very tall tank, so a lot of heavies will be able to fire it down at a slight angle, so it will be very easy to pen, but if you're below the vehicle, if it's using its 8 degrees of gun depression, obviously you cannot pen the front plate. The gun mantlet here is also not that strong. It can still be penned in a lot of places right here, 100 millimeters, uh, right in the middle here. Obviously, it is a spaced plate, so don't shoot heat or HE at this kind of plate. It only works with AP and APCR to go through there. But ideally, you want to avoid the gun mantle entirely and shoot at the sides of the turret right here. Because as soon as you turn the vehicle here, it becomes weaker. So basically, always have a massive weak spot on the side of the gun mantle right here on this vehicle. Side armor, don't have to talk about it. It's 52 millimeters. It is entirely flat, so forget to find a side scrape. This vehicle is going to work best if you go hull down and peek quickly, use the 8 degrees of gun depression, and don't stay in the line of fire for too long. It doesn't have a cupola on top of the turret, which is a big advantage over something like an AMX-30. B, but in general, the armor is fair. It's slightly better than that of a Karo or a Progetto, but it is still nothing to be happy about.
Now we're going to go into battle with the lion. And if you've ever played the Progetto 65, you know exactly how this thing plays. The only difference, obviously, is armor is slightly better. It's slightly less mobile, but you can only fire two of the three shells that you have available. But outside of that, it's basically the exact same tank, the exact same playstyle. So there isn't going to be anything new, anything special about this vehicle that you have to note of. It's just a slight, slight variation of something that already exists, like the Progetto and the Karo, basically. It's the middle child between the Progetto and the Karo. And in that regard, I don't think that there is a reason to uh, purchase a vehicle like this one. It is sort of like the, the M60, the, the M60 1-to-1B uh, tier of vehicle where you don't really need to have it. I mean, it's if it ever comes into shop for 15, 16, 1,000 gold, maybe even a little bit cheaper, like a T95 E6, which is sold for very cheap, but that is a vehicle that works quite well. If it is ever sold for that kind of price, that kind of value, then I think it could be a worthy addition to a tank collection. But outside of that, this is not a vehicle that is going to, first of all, be used much by professional players. It's not going to be used in tournaments much, unless I missed something in the last five years. And uh, it's also not going to be a vehicle that is going to perform at the top of its uh, class. It's like that Karo who just overpeaked himself right there. Basically, anything you can do in, in a Progetto, you can do in this vehicle as well. And anything that a Progetto can do, you'll be fine with that. So let's uh, be very careful here. The team is bad, which is not very nice. Um, obviously, the third shell missing, basically, and not being usable makes it a little bit harder to play than the Progetto. And uh, obviously the, the 10 alpha damage, stuff like that, they're not going to make a difference whatsoever. Uh, you're not going to even notice that you have 10 less alpha damage. Unless you look very, very closely. So I want to play this uh, 1 to 1 B. And that's kind of the, the tier I would put this vehicle in as well. The 1 to 1 B tier of... It's in the game, but... What's the damn point? Why are you dumb, Progetto? Uh, Karo, I mean. Uh, why are you why are you throwing your tank away? So, that was a bad play by that, uh, by that guy. And I've got 450 hit points, which would be enough to take a shot from the 1 to 1 B again. But not a shot from anybody else. I know the 183 is camping in the back. So, um, yeah, basically, this... A vehicle like this, it's not really about the tank stats, more about how well you know the battlefield. How well you can move around and use the gun uh, across the battle. So that's what I'm going to do now, because the 777 is pushing forward. He's probably very interested in me. So I will now be moving away from that situation, because obviously I don't want to get stuck. So what I will be doing, um, the 183 is obviously going to get uh, pressure there. I'm going to go around the outside here. So I don't have to cross in the open if the uh, 777 decides to wait uh, under the bridge and uh, tries to peek me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swoop around to these houses. And if the uh, 183 gets attacked by the 777, I can go to the uh, destroyed uh, city over there and maybe get some crossfire shots into him and avoid getting shot myself. I'm just going to have to be uh, somewhat careful because obviously if the 777 walks up there... See? Um, then uh, I'm going to have quite a little bit of a problem, which means that I'm going to be able to uh, use the house to turn around and get myself out of this situation right here, because that's not a situation I want to be in. And uh, the 1 to 1B is now disappearing. He's a uh, not one shot, but uh, close enough to it. And now we have the uh, two tank destroyers and the 777, which now has reposition, which means I'm going to turn back and go to the other side of the map again. I want to avoid the 777. And then try and have these guys spot the tank destroyers, spot the 1 to 1B, so I can take some shots at those guys. And there's the E4 as well at the back, which is good. Now, I don't know where the 183 is. He could be peeking the other side. Uh, but now we're going to have to be somewhat careful. Exactly, there's the 1 to 1B. Gonna be... There's the 183. Uh, just as I said. Um... <laughs> and... Um... I could try and attack the 777 from around the outside. The problem is obviously the 183, by the time I arrive, is going to be reloaded. And I will have a problem at trying to peek over uh, this position right there. Also, the 777 can finish me off in one shot, so I don't really want to risk that at all as well. And uh, the 183 just fluffed the shot on the 1-1B. So obviously, the problem is going to be the 777, because any peek I make towards these tank destroyers, the 777 can come from the side and uh, shoot me in the side of the tank for that. I'm going to have to be very careful here. I'm going to go for three here if I can manage. I'm going to load. Nope, never mind. It didn't work. Uh, to 1B should also be in a position where I can shoot it. Exactly. And now I have 
all three shots spent, and the 777 is coming up, which now means that I can push down here and uh, get close. Obviously, the 183 is most likely to finish him off, but if he doesn't, I can uh, fluff the shot. There we go. Now I can uh, wait. 51. He has fired, which means I got another five seconds, and that's that. There we go. Four still alive. Can't peek him from up here. Basically, this vehicle plays the exact same as the Brigetta would. Just play on the map uh, wherever an opportunity is. You find the opportunity, you take the opportunity, you get the damage, you go home, basically. So there is nothing new, nothing revolutionary about how this vehicle plays. And uh, yeah, it just works. It's not worth it, but it works. Oh, no. All right, let's play another battle. Maybe maybe it's going to be a little bit better, but this is Himmelsdorf, which is... Uh, Pretty much the worst map in the entire game for medium tanks. Now, also, quick PSA, don't forget to open your advent calendar if you haven't done that already and uh, open it regularly. I mean, I know that the uh, reward is an LT432, which pretty much isn't worth the garage space it occupies, but nonetheless, it is a free tank, so go ahead and get that. There's also the A46 different, which is new, uh, but I'm not going to make a video about that. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm sure someone else is going to do that, um, but that vehicle is... Uh, a tier 7 light tank that's uh, not worth any money. But uh, this vehicle, it is worth money. Just not a lot. So, let's see. Obviously, I just did all three shells there. I'm gonna lose my DPM. I can do that quite easily at that point because there isn't gonna be any threat to me. And uh, I can also do it again here. Obviously, wasted it. But right now, it doesn't matter whether I use that third shell or not, because I can't play aggressively anyway. We got the E3 over there, we got the 50B with this massive clip, so there isn't going to be any aggressive move I can be taking here, so I can just waste my shells right here. It's not going to have a difference, because by the time uh, they are reloaded, I can attack. All right, so exactly now. Okay, now the 183 is the big problem. He is going to go down uh, to the TVP, probably, but I can just take a snapshot anyway. And now we're going to wait those four seconds. Am I going to wait the shell? Yes, I'm going to wait the shell. HE in the back. 400. And the object's not going to turn in time. But the game it is. So, here's the BZ. I got no shells. Going to wait out. Go back. Uh, I mean, obviously, the, the T100 sacrificing himself would be a noble move, but he's not going to do that. So, let's just uh, go ahead and uh, deal with that. Obviously, this is a very free win right here. Nothing's going to happen. Um, and there's not much I can do anyway. Just gonna wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Go off the track. Now drive past him. Gonna wait for the shell. That's a bit unfortunate. Gonna wait for the shell. I don't have one. Doesn't matter. Just gonna fire this one. And now, 7 HP. I'm gonna go ram myself into him. It'll be fine. I'm not gonna kill him with, with this, uh, but it works. All right, let's do another one because that second one was that short. And uh, obviously, if you play the Progetto, if you play the Leopard, it plays the same. That's this vehicle. You're not going to have anything new. You're not going to have anything surprising. It isn't a God King OP super great vehicle or whatever someone else is trying to tell you. It's fine, but it's not special. And uh, if it's anything more expensive than a, a Caro or a 121B, but it's obviously not going to be worth it, and the Karo was in the Black Friday shop for 20k, so even then, it's questionable. So, uh, you're in the way, man. So, you don't have a shot. I do. So, I'm gonna throw that away. Okay, there's a Sheridan up there. Our Sheridan is um, not really interested, but uh, I'm not either. That's a bit of a problem. So, good. I've, for once, never cared about the life of 183. Either my team or enemy, so that is a good thing that that just happened. And, uh, let's see. 300 HP on that Sheridan, which now means, ideally, that me and this Sheridan right here, once I have all three shells reloaded, I will be able to push that Sheridan up there uh, together with Sheridan. Because the entire enemy team and the other Sheridan are on the other side. And here is the Sheridan trying to escape. Someone trying to get up here. Elevation. And uh, that wasn't it, but I'm going to have another opportunity to take a shot at him. Uh, if he does decide to keep running. Yes. There we go. That'll do. And now we have the Sheridan there. Not enough to clip him. 340 times 
three is not 1300 so it would be very nice if the other Sheridan would assist but as long as I can get one shell on the reload I will be able to kill him right here so let's do that he's gonna run away most likely he's gonna drop down into the field of hopefully the other Sheridan nope he didn't okay he falls back there gotta watch out for that so that's what I'm gonna go for now Go all the way around, around and round and round. 98 HP. That should not be enough to survive, and it's not going to be. Hello. One, two, three. Aim. Boom. All right. Four enemies, all spotted. We all know where they are. Main target, 50B, or rather, at this point, I7, because he's easy to shoot at. One and two. All right. Not too bad. Three kills. Haven't done much damage so far. Uh, it does take a while to rack up damage with this thing. You kind of want to slow battle, uh, ideally, to get maximal damage with this thing because, you know, you have three shells and they don't reload that quickly. Especially if you fire the third one ever, uh, you're not going to have a great time in terms of your DPM on this vehicle. So, fire the first two, reload them, and you'll be fine. All right. Now it's just uh, damage hunting, basically. It's a waste of a shot, but doesn't really matter at this point. Can reload one, and then I can put two into him. One. And two. There we go. And that's 3k again. Yay. That's the line. Nothing impressive. Nothing special. Nothing terrible. It is perfectly balanced. And that's a good thing for the game, for the tank. But it is not a good thing for your wallet, because it is not worth any money.